Hey everyone, this is John Gallant. I just got access to the new GitHub code spaces, so I wanted to quickly show you how I got it running with GitHub Pages. GitHub Code Spaces allows you to instantiate a dev environment right in your browser without having to clone locally, set up a dev environment, install dependencies. It takes care of all that for you with containers. GitHub Pages is a technology that allows you to host websites directly from a GitHub repository. So today I'm going to show you how we combine those two things to enable anyone to quickly update your site without having to install any dependencies. The site that we're going to enable this on today is the Azure SDK website. You can get to this site by going to aka.ms slash azsdk. So let's say I'm browsing this website. I'm on the guidelines and I notice that I want to say capitalize this P here. And I want to be able to test it as well. So we go over to the GitHub link. We find the contributing guide and we see that it's quite a lengthy installation process as in we have to install Ruby. We have to install Jekyll. We have to restart the machine. We have to run bundler. We have to install dependencies. We have to serve and we have to open a browser to run the site. We want to avoid all of this so that anyone can go and update the site whenever they want to without having to install all of these dependencies. So I'm going to quickly show you how to enable GitHub code spaces on a GitHub pages website. So let's first fork this GitHub repo I'm going to click on fork. And I already have a fork. I'm going to click on it. So I'm going to create a new branch. Let's call it code spaces test and click create branch. Then I'm going to click the green code button. I'm going to say open with code spaces. That's going to launch a brand new code space and initialize everything for me. All right, my GitHub code spaces is all initialized. So now I'm going to show you how to enable a custom container for your repository. Microsoft ships what we call VS code dev containers, which are the dev container file and a Docker file that define what you want in your code space. You can find them at github.com slash Microsoft slash VS code dash dev dash containers. So I'm going to go into containers and I'm going to find Jekyll. Jekyll is the underlying technology that powers GitHub pages. So I'm going to click Jekyll. You can see here that we have a dot dev container folder and a dot VS code folder. Let's see what's inside them. I just want to say a big special thanks to Carlos Mendable. He's been working with me over the last couple of days to get this all lit up. So thanks Carlos. So inside of the dev container folder, we have a Docker file and we have a dev container .json. As you can see, this Docker file says that we need Ruby, that we need bundler, that we need Jekyll, and it does a bunch of other things for us. In the dev container.json file, you can specify what Docker file you want run when the code space is created, what ports you want open, and other commands that you want to run when the code space is first created. So back in our code spaces, we're going to clone that repository into our project and then copy those files into our project. It really is the easiest way to do it. So I'm just going to say git clone. I'm going to pass in the URL to that repository. I'm going to allow clipboard access hit enter, and you'll see that the folder is created there. So I'm just going to navigate down to containers, to Jekyll, dev container. I'm just going to control C, copy, click in the empty space, control V. And that is going to paste that dot dev container folder into my project. I'm going to go into the dev container file and in this case, I actually want to run just bundle install. So that command will be run when my code space is created. I'm going to go down here. I'm just going to delete that folder because I don't need it anymore. In my git changes, you can see two files are created. I'm just going to push those. I'm going to push that to my branch. So we've added the files needed to instantiate the code space with all the appropriate dependencies in the Docker file necessary to run Jekyll. So we're going to go back to my fork. And we're going to create a new code space. And as you can see in the build container section here, it's running through all of those commands that are in the container. Now this takes a few minutes the first time the code space is launched, but subsequent loads are much faster. All right, my new code space is all initialized. So let's go ahead and open a terminal. I'm going to open up the contributing.md folder and just to find the command I need to run here, it is bundle exec Jekyll serve. I'm going to copy that, paste it into my terminal, hit enter. Now, because in dev container here, I forwarded port 4000. So when I click at 127001 4000, 
it'll be forwarded to my code spaces container. So I'm just going to control click that. It's going to open a new tab. And there you have it. My code is now running in a GitHub code spaces. Now the file that we wanted to change was general. We wanted to change that to a capital P. So this file is general introduction design principles. So I'm going to go into general design principles, change that to a P and Jekyll has detected that a file has been changed and it's rebuilding the site. So when I come back here and I hit refresh, you'll see that that P is now capital. So my entire dev experience is now in the browser. How cool is that? So let's just recap real quick. I'm in a repository that's been set up to use GitHub code spaces. So the end user wants to change that website. They come here, they click code and they say, open with code spaces. You can create a new code space or use an existing code space that they already have set up for that site. That code space has all the dependencies needed to run this application. So a developer can very quickly edit that code, test it. And when they push, they can push with confidence. Let's click on that code space. You can see this time it's going to be much faster than the last time because everything's cached. What's also cool is that I did not push any of those changes, but the code space cached my changes so that they're available when I relaunch that code space. So if, an, if I'm an end user, I'm going to test that by running the site. And the only thing I have to do at this point is run that Jekyll start command. So I'm going to run that bundle exec Jekyll serve. It's going to port forward to 4,000. Now I can test things in the browser without having to install anything locally. Another thing that you could do is you could just run this command here inside of your dev container. So here inside of dev container, post create command, you could do a bundle install and the serve command. It's totally up to you what you want to do. You can run any command effectively when you're code spaces starts. Another thing I wanted to quickly show you is that you can add those files to your project in VS code using the remote extension. I'm going to hit control shift P and I'm going to say remote containers, add development container configuration files. Then I'm going to select the project Jekyll. I'm just going to add those files here. You'll notice that's a little bit different than what we saw before. And the reason why I didn't show this first is because when you do a Git clone from the repository, it gets the latest files from GitHub, whereas the VS Code extension only releases their files every month. So since Carlos and I have been working back and forth over the last couple of days to try and get this to work, his latest changes are not pushed to the VS Code extension yet. But it is another option if you prefer that method. So that's it for this video. We got GitHub Code Spaces running in a GitHub Pages website in a couple of minutes. Thanks for watching and have a great day.